On the 10th of June 1944, days after the Normandy landings with the Allies beginning to push the German army back, a German SS officer was brutally executed in a village north of a French ghost town. Helmut Kempfer was a man who would be executed in a huge public spectacle in a terrifying and brutal manner, and he was a victim of the French resistance. Days later, the SS would order brutal reprisals against the French people, and an SS commander would find Kempfer's charred remains, and he would then order the village nearby to be razed to the ground, and with this, hundreds of civilians were killed by the SS in horrific ways. The death of Helm of Kempfer showed the disdain the French had towards the SS and those members of the German army who had put them through such a tough occupation. Over the following months, more fighting would take place, and eventually the country would be liberated with the Allies and the free French forces pushing back the Germans. But within the fierce fighting of Normandy, Kempfer was taken into an ambulance, which was then torched. Join us today to look at the horrific death of the SS commander burned alive, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Helm of Kempfer was born in Feringen in Germany in 1909, and he had a normal upbringing and trained to become an apprentice topographer. It was not the most interesting job for a young man, but then when Hitler seized power inside of Germany, Kempfer then sought more from his country, and he wanted to find other work. He took up arms becoming part of the German Heer, who were the land forces of the German army. This was forced in 1935, and it brought back the German army, air force and navy that had been banned for some time following the end of the First World War. The Treaty of Versailles had placed severe restrictions on the German military, but it was clear that Hitler was now building up his army for a significant event across Europe, and many would have seen that he was preparing for a world war in the continent, the second within 25 years. At the time, only the Reichswehr was allowed, and this was a small defensive force comprising of 100,000 soldiers, but Hitler wanted a huge army. He began to enrol all boys into the Hitler Youth, and these were trained as soldiers, and would in the Second World War play an important role in the end of the conflict, when things got desperate for Hitler. The Heer became later known as a Wehrmacht, and the land forces during the Second World War would be involved in huge invasions of countries such as Poland, France, and towards the east in the Balkan states, before they invaded the Soviet Union during Operation Barbarossa. Helmuth Kempfer then continued to be promoted within the army, and he was then, in 1939, transferred to become a member of the SS, the army's unit of the SS. He would continue to rise throughout various promotions in the Waffen SS, and he was there on the eastern front in the thick of many different battles. He commanded the 3rd Battalion of the Das Reichs Division Reconnaissance Group of the 4th Panzergrenadiers der Führer Regiment. He was considered by military generals as a skilled leader and a very brave soldier, and he was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. He was given this for his actions during the cold winter of 1943 in the Soviet Union, and he was also given the close combat clasping gold, one of only a few hundred to receive this. He could have gone higher and become a general, however things were going wrong for the Germans during Operation Barbarossa. The campaign initially had many successes, as the army rampaged across the land, they would then be followed by the Einsatzgruppen, who massacred thousands of civilians. But following the Battle of Stalingrad, the war was turning against the Germans, with the loss of the 6th Army. In spring 1944, the Dask Reich Division had been sent to the Western Front from the Eastern Front, and Kempfer went with his division. The Germans knew there would be some form of landing that would take place in Europe, and they knew that the Allies were beginning to consider an invasion of France to try and retake large amounts of Europe. Whole units of soldiers were removed from the Eastern Front and were sent to northern France, where Hitler believed was most likely for an Allied invasion to take place. He would be right in this thinking when D-Day was launched on the 6th of June 1944, but Helm of Kempfer had been given a number of roles by the military's high command to carry out with his soldiers. In the southern uplands in central France, he was asked to carry out attacks on the Maqui, a group of guerrilla fighters of the French resistance who were the constant thorn in the side of the Germans. The Maqui were mostly working class young men who avoided conscription and they went to the mountains and the woods and created resistance factions. They also organised themselves well and most of them were in the mountains of Brittany and in the south of France and they would use guerrilla tactics to disrupt the Germans. They were involved in helping Jews and Allied airmen escape the Germans and they could spot their enemy who they were looking for them from their high positions. They did manage to intimidate their enemy but they didn't fight in large scale battles 
and they spread their soldiers out in different areas. They would use whatever weapons they could get their hands on, including weapons like the Sten sent from Britain. They did help the Allied invasion of Normandy, and they helped to delay German forces in the north of France, and Kempfer's men would be held up. Kempfer had been sent to deal with these soldiers, with his men, but it did not go very well. Following D-Day, Kempfer was taken prisoner four kilometres east of St. Leonard in Oblat by a group of resistance fighters led by Jean Canu. He would never have expected what would have happened to him, and his treatment was incredibly barbaric. Canu then handed Kempfer over to Colonel George Yingorgin, a French communist militant who was senior in the Maquis. He was then held within the group, and it was Yingorgin's men who carried out Kempfer's execution. Helmut Kempfer was the highest ranking officer to be ever captured by the French resistance, and when he was captured, the German soldiers and his detachment of men were sent to go and rescue him, as they realised he had been abducted by the enemy and was in grave danger. But the resistance had no plans to ransom him, or even allow him to return to the Germans, and they planned a huge public execution of a man who they deemed to have been a war criminal. The resistance decided that Helmuth Kempfer was to be burned alive on the 10th of June 1944, four days after D-Day. A huge search was launched for him, and the Germans shot dead two resistance members near to where he'd disappeared, and they realised that the Germans would fight back with a vengeance to try and recapture Kempfer. He was taken by the resistance to a village north of Orador Saglan, and a huge crowd had been rallied and gathered by the resistance. He was paraded in front of the crowd, and the execution of a high-ranking SS man was cheered by them. Many would have expected him to be shot by a firing squad, but this was not an execution that the crowd would forget. It's believed that Kempfer, along with a number of other captured soldiers, were thrown into the back of a captured German field ambulance, which had been left abandoned nearby. These men were all locked inside of the ambulance, and then a member of the resistance then set this on fire, and the soldiers and Kempfer were trying desperately to get out, but they could not. Of course with this, Helmuth Kempfer was killed being burned alive, and then after his execution his remains were taken to Orador Saglan, and when they got there, they would be discovered by the Nazis. SS Sturmbaum Führer Adolf Diekmann discovered the remains of his former friend Kempfer, and he found the body handcuffed inside of the German field ambulance, along with the other German soldiers near to the village. After seeing this brutality, he then ordered the village nearby to be razed to the ground, and every civilian who was inside the village was ordered to be killed. The SS began to shoot anyone they came across, and the men were taken to six barns in a shed, and the women were then locked into a church with the children. The village was then heavily looted, and the men in the barn were then machine gunned in the legs and were unable to walk. Their barn was set on fire, with 190 Frenchmen dying in this specific attack. The same horrors would occur inside the church, as the women and children inside were locked in. The SS then placed an incendiary bomb next to the church, and when it went off, the church went up in flames. Anyone who tried to escape by jumping through the windows was shot by the SS. In this one attack, 247 women and 205 children died in the church, and there was only one survivor. For the execution of Helmuth Kempfer, 643 civilians were slaughtered. Helmuth Kempfer was the most senior member of the SS to have been captured and executed by the French resistance during the Second World War. The commander and a friend of Kempfer's, who had carried out the massacre and reprisals, was charged over the killing, but all charges against him were dropped when he himself was killed, fighting in Normandy. The episode regarding Kempfer's execution and the reprisals were brutal and horrific, but he was a man whose men had been involved in war crimes himself. He was a very decorated soldier, and was one who could have been made a general as the war went on, but locked inside of a German field ambulance, he would meet the brutal wrath of the French resistance, who would deal with Kempfer in a harrowing manner. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.